Today we want to talk about heart work or the amount of work the heart does each cardiac cycle in order to pump one stroke volume of blood. Remember the pressure volume loop or the PV loop where we have the pressure on the Y axis and volume on the X axis. We want to show that the area inside the PV loop is actually heart work. But before that, let's see how we can calculate this area. If we first find the area under the top curve in the PV loop and call it A1, and then find the area under the bottom curve of the PV loop and call it A2, then A is A1 minus A2. We can calculate each of these areas, A1 and A2, by integrating the top curve and the bottom curve. So finding the integrals of the top curve and bottom curve will give us A1 and A2. But first, let's see why this area, A, the area inside the PV loop, gives us heart work. So in the medical literature, the units of pressure and volume in the PV loop are millimeter of mercury and milliliter. But we know that we can uh, replace them with any other units of pressure and volume. For example, we can use Pascal or Newton per meter squared and cubic meter here. Also, we know that the unit of an integral is the product of the units of the y-axis and the x-axis. Or in this case, the unit of the integral of the top curve and the bottom curve would be Newton per meter squared times cubic meter, which gives us Newton meter. And we know that this is the unit for work. Now, let's get back to the problem that we have. We need to integrate this curve and this curve. There are different ways, different methods to find the integral of a curve like this and eventually the area under this curve. One of the methods is called the trapezoid rule. The trapezoid rule will give us an estimation of the integral of a curve. For example, in this case, if we form a trapezoid under, under this curve, the area of this trapezoid gives us an estimation of the integral of this curve. To find the area of a trapezoid, we need this dimension, which is H1, and then H2, and also the base. And then the area inside the trapezoid can be calculated using this equation, H1 plus H2 divided by 2 times the base. Now, let's use this rule, the trapezoid rule, to find A1 and A2. Let's start with a2. First, we need to form a trapezoid, just like similar to here, under the bottom curve here. We will have H1, H2, and B, which is the base. And then A2 can be calculated using this same equation. The same thing for A1. We can form a trapezoid under the top curve where we have H1, H2, and B, and then use that same equation to estimate A1. Just one more thing. Notice that we said we can use this trapezoid rule in order to estimate the area under 
this curve or the integral of this curve. In other words, our goal or the gold standard is the area under this curve here. And we estimate it with the area of this trapezoid. And therefore, there is an error. And that is the difference between the area of the trapezoid and the area under the curve. Now, is there any way that we can minimize or reduce this error? The answer is yes. So if we use the trapezoid rule two times rather than one time, what happens? Suppose that we use the trapezoid rule once between the maximum pressure that we have here and the end systolic pressure that we have here. And one time we use the trapezoid rule between the maximum pressure and the start of the ejection phase here. And then calculate the area of these two trapezoids and uh, find their summation as an estimation for A1. You can see that now using two trapezoids rather than one trapezoid, it can it will give us a smaller error compared to the red error that we had using only one trapezoid. Now that we could find an estimation for A1 and A2, we can calculate the area inside the PV loop, which gives us the hard work.